this is the advanced, the big green arrow. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Thanks very much. Um, I will warn everybody that these slides are quite different than the slide packets that you have, so I would strongly encourage you all to um, go to Kathy Lewis or whoever from the AHA and pick up it's electronically available. New, new electronic variable slides. Excellent. Speak up just a bit into the microphone. So, great. So before we start talking about acute heart failure, I'd like to take, um, discuss really briefly a lesson that we took from Mother Nature in terms of pregnancy. Pregnancy is a, patholo is a physiologic state where we, there are marked improvements in cardiac, in arterial, and in renal function. And these are the exact kind of changes that we'd like to see in acute heart failure. Relaxin in humans has been shown to mediate these adaptations as well as to have anti-ischemic, anti-inflammatory, and anti-fibrotic effects. The, the relaxin is, and its signaling systems are present in both men and women and is, is elevated up to pharmacologic concentrations during the nine months of pregnancy. Serolaxin, which is the recombinant form of human relaxin 2, may produce these beneficial effects in patients with acute heart failure. So who are these patients with acute heart failure? In general, patients with acute heart failure present with marked shortness of breath. In effect, they're sensing that they're drowning in their own fluids. And these patients, while they're sensing this, are also having the experience of an onslaught of a neurohormonal, inflammatory, and hemodynamic or abnormal storm. And so our thought was perhaps that serolaxin could calm this storm. Now, I'll go through these very quickly as compared to the other, um, the, my actual presentation. And it's important to note that these findings that we see in Relax HF are not coming out of nowhere. They're coming in the context of a dose finding study, 234 patients, where we saw that a 30 microgram per kilogram per day dose had significant improvements in clinical outcomes and suggested improvements in, in, mort mort uh, in survival. In addition, serolaxin in that setting was safe and well tolerated without significant hypotension. So we took the findings from pre-relax and advanced into the relax HF study where we proposed that seroloxin would improve dyspnea compared to placebo as well as multiple other clinical outcomes. I will not go through these inclusion exclusion criteria in detail, but in brief, patients were admitted who were hospitalized for heart failure, who had dyspnea and objective signs of congestion, who had normal to elevated systolic blood pressures and mild to moderate renal dysfunction. Patients were also enrolled early in their clinical course. Patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to serolaxin or placebo for a 48-hour infusion intravenously, and we evaluated multiple endpoints through the course of their hospitalization, as well as post-hospitalization up to 180 days, at which time uh, mortality was evaluated. The patient population is highly representative of patients who present with acute heart failure. They basically elderly patients with normal to elevated um, blood pressures and who have had a history of symptomatic systolic heart failure. The comorbidities between the two groups were um, very similar, as were the concomitant heart failure medications. At baseline, approximately 7% of the patients in each group were treated with intravenous nitrates. We enrolled patients within, on average, eight hours of presentation. This is the um, primary endpoint that demonstrates the um, significant symptom relief of dyspnea in this trial with a 19% increase in the area under the curve um, with serolaxin from baseline through day five with a p-value of 0 0.0075. This established the positive um, trial, whereas we, where we were required to show one positive endpoint with a p-value less than 0.025. The second dyspnea endpoint, despite having um, improvements in dyspnea at 6 hours, 12 hours, and 24 hours, the primary endpoint was required patients to have moderate to market dyspnea at all three time endpoints, and this endpoint was not met. In addition, the secondary endpoint of cardiovascular death or heart failure re or renal failure rehospitalizations through day 60 was not met. Despite an improvement in cardiovascular death, there was offset by a slight increase in heart failure and renal failure rehospitalization rates. And this was reflected as well in the second secondary endpoint, where despite an overall increase in by 0.6 in days alive out of hospital there was not this did not reach statistical significance importantly we were able to show a 37% reduction in cardiovascular death up through days 180, with a p-value of 0.028 with a number needed to treat of 29 patients to save one cardiovascular life 
or prevent one cardiovascular death is more accurate, sorry. Um, in, the, in this context, we are also able to show marked reductions in the signs and symptoms of congestion through day two, and importantly, early and persistent reductions in worsening of heart failure, such that by 14 days, there was a 30%, a significant 30% reduction in the risk of worsening heart failure in the serolaxin-treated patients. All of these benefits were done in the context of less use of intravenous diuretics and less use of other IV vasoactive therapies, both of which were reduced approximately 25% in the serolaxin groups. In addition, there was about a third of a day reduction in the duration of ICU care and almost a full day reduction, significant reduction, in the length, initial hospitalization length of stay. These in-hospital and clinical outcome findings were supported by improvements in biomarkers. There was improvement in the um, signs of congestion as reflected by NT-proBNP. There was prevention of worsening of renal function as reflected by measurements of the creatinine. There was improvement in hepatic function as reflected by greater decreases in ALT. And there was, a, there was prevention of myocardial necrosis, significant myocardial necrosis by the, um, as assessed by the high sensitivity troponin T. Serolaxin was um, well tolerated and safe with no differences in adverse events or serious adverse events. And all these findings culminated in the final report of a 37% reduction in all cause death through day 180. So in, we saw, found these um, beneficial clinical findings in the RELAX AHF trial, which are now being published online tomorrow in The Lancet, and then an article in press in JAK will also be soon to be published. So thank you very much for your attention.